I could sit here and rant for hours. But we have got a bus to catch. Yes. Before <laughs> it disappears for good. Hello internet, welcome to Worcester. Um, I've come down here to take a final trip on the, the full 144 route. Uh, it's a very historic route um, dating back over 100 years now. Um, it's being cut back from next week. So we've come to give a bit of a history, talk a bit more about buses in general and how they're important if we're going to start actually making a difference in the world. Um, I say we because I have a Bryn with me. Hello. I bought Paddy McGuinness to the Midlands. They're confused. No? You're not biting? Not today. At least seem a bit excited. I am excited. You know I don't do happy in the morning. <laughs> it's about, I woke him up at five o'clock this morning to get here. Uh, he's, he's a bit grumpy. Um, anyway, this is my childhood bus route. So it's a trip down memory lane for me. And one final trip to give it a full send, send off. Back. Yeah. Right, let's go and catch a bus. So Bryn, it's a bit dark down here, but our, our carriage to Birmingham awaits. Now what it needs is a driver. Yeah, that, that, that wait that for that bit. It's 7.15. Yeah. That's 15. Thank you. I'm quite liking the real lighting on here. Yeah, a bit blue. There's a song in the situation. I'm not happy. I forgot to get coffee. Last day to Birmingham. Martin has a weird name. To me, it's normal because I'm from these parts. But uh, him as a northerner who has placed names like Bessie and Bath and whatever. And Bosle to his Earlums of the Heights. You think it's weird? Yeah, we don't name places after people called Martin. The 144, how have we got to where we are today? Um, a lot of people are unhappy about it being cut down. It's a, it's a historic route, it dates back to the 1910s under various guises. It started out Worcester to Drightwich, then get ex gets extended up to Bromsgrove, then gets extended into um, Birmingham, extended the other end out to Malvern. Um, that actually lasted until uh, 90s on a Sunday, it still went the whole route, Birmingham to Malvern. Mm -hmm. In the noughties, you get short workings to Cats Hill, um, only half of them go through to Birmingham. It's a product of bus deregulation, basically. Right, everything has just gone backwards since then. Everything needs to be run for a profit, not for the needs of the people that actually need to use it. Yeah, the, the, the word service does a lot of heavy lifting these days. First, who operate the service have decided, oh, it's not making enough money for us, because I don't believe them when they say it's not profitable. I just don't think it's profitable enough for them. It's not, not the right kind yeah. of profit. Because yeah. they've cut back a hell of a lot in Worcestershire and I think it's more operational convenience rather than profit that's driving this one. Mm. This part down this end between Worcester and Cats Hill is still going to be running. It's just that Cats Hill to Birmingham section that's, that's being withdrawn. I mean, on, on a personal level, this happening makes it very difficult for me to now go and see my family. Effectively, in some ways, yeah, it's use it or lose it, but also you can't use something that they're not willing to provide. So it, yeah. we're at an impasse and nobody wants to make that first step. It's just another conscious decision to lock in car dependency. It's not just the 144. I'm highlighting the 144 because it's the bus of my childhood. It's the bus that I go to see my family on. It's a bus that means something to me. But this exact same thing is happening up and down the country. Unless you live in a big city these days, you just can't travel without right. a car. I could sit here and rant for hours. But we have got a bus to catch. Yes. Before <laughs> it disappears for good.
Yeah, it's really sad. Because back in my day in this town, the bus station was just always heaving with buses going all over the place. And now it's like we're here. It's a Saturday morning. Empty. I wonder why. It's because there's no buses that go anywhere meaningful. So we're now at Bromsgrove and I have bumped into friend of the channel. What's up? Mr. Mark Hipwell. How's everybody doing? 144 fan. Oh, I love the 144. Sad, I'm sad so days. sad. It's... Shall we go to Costa and yeah. discuss this? Let's go get some coffee. Deal. On the 1st of May. Thank you. This is so cozy. Look at all the I know. This is adorable. <laughs> right, we are here with friend of the channel, Mark. What's up? Um, Mark is now a resident of Bromsgrove. Yes, I am. And you have strong opinions on the 144. Absolutely. You may cast your mind back to October last year. And he is taking the baton for the legendary 144 bus. 144! Um, where a certain race happened from here into Birmingham. Or I might just beat it by a couple of minutes, but we'll see how we do. Do we think the 144 just about, ah, oh, I've been beaten by a bike now, I just can't go on. Probably. It's tapping out. Uh, I've always pictured the 144 being sentient. It's a shame. Uh, anyway, we've got Costa. Yep. Most important thing. Um, back in my day in Bromsgrove, we didn't even have a Costa. So it's changed. It's changed. I've got kind of two sides of the coin on this one. A, I like public transport, and I think public transport is very important and it's very good. And B, uh, it has directly impacted me, which I'm really annoyed about. Uh, so not only is it not running tomorrow, when I and thousands of people will be coming into Birmingham City Centre for the 10k and a half marathon, and I can't get in without having to drive uh, a certain amount, so I have to drive to Longbridge and then and get the bus there. Do you talk because you, you talk about the number of buses that you could get from Bromsgrove to Birmingham, and there was like six. four or six an hour. Yeah, it, which just so many because you used to have what a time to be alive. The 144 running two buses an hour into Birmingham. Yep. The 143 running two buses an hour into Birmingham. You used to have the 145 running once an hour into Birmingham. To get to the station from here, it's going to be a what, 45 minute walk for the average person? They're basically like me and you walk quite fast. Yeah. It's, it's a long It'd take walk. me half an hour. Yeah. We touched on this when we were sat in yeah. Brightwich. It's, yeah. it's bus deregulation. Everything has to be now run for a profit rather than as a service to the people that use it. And we're never going to get people out of cars if we continue to do it this way. Well, it, I was chit chatting to one of my neighbours this morning and you know, the bus service doesn't need to get run for profit because what it facilitates is people being able to go to work or go into Birmingham and spend money. Yeah, and, and when I get the 144 and I go into town, I go and have lunch or I go and do my job and it means I can pay my council tax or I can go and spend money in shops in Birmingham City Centre. And that council tax would, in a sensible way, go back into the buses. More buses! Ah, don't get me started on this stuff. But Worcestershire Council in the last 15 years has just become so car centric. Oh. It's ridiculous. Like well, the... I won't get too political about this one, but it is it is coming up to May 5th and this is going out before then. So just think when you're putting your cross on your paper what you're doing. Vote for the 144. So Mark has just left us. He could only join us for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to do the final leg of our journey. We are, and it's, as you can tell now, it's midday and that sun is absolutely belting. Yeah. It is running late. Um, still no sign of it. Um, and this is half the problem, to be honest. Why are people going to stick with a bus service that they can't rely on that always runs late? I mean, it's an hourly service from here into Birmingham. And if you can't rely on that turning up remotely in the right time frame, of course it's going to start losing passengers. <laughs> right, OK, about 10 minutes late, here it is, pulling into the bus station. So we're now on 144 into Birmingham, last leg of our journey on the last day that you'll be able to do this. Coming into 
really you know, this is going to be one of the villages that's going to be really affected by this. Part of Worcestershire, um, a lot of the services connected to we are in Bromsbury, and its only connection is going to be that walk with replacement that starts on Tuesday every 70 minutes, which is no good to anybody. Okay, so we're now firmly in Birmingham. We've passed through Rubri, we picked up even more passengers now from Rubri, up to 24 people on here. Yeah. And, and to pick, first say this bus isn't used. So, heading up the hill into Northfield, 27 people are still going. You can only see here a couple of empty seats. Remember, first say that nobody uses this bus. So, a load more people just got off in Northfield. It's not just about going to Birmingham. People in Montgomery do travel to places like Northfield. I know when I was a kid, I used to, because my nan used to live around here. So this would be my stop back in the day. We've arrived in Casale right now, we're waiting for time for the bus stop. The frustrating thing is, while we're waiting here, I know we're going to get stuck in traffic on the way to Birmingham. We're actually arriving to Birmingham late. No, the timetable isn't necessarily the most well thought out. There's still 16 people on here. We lost a lot of people on Northfield, but they still wouldn't be able to make this journey far enough. Bye. Made it to the city centre. There was 16 people waiting to the end, 28 at its peak. All of those are not going to have an alternative come tomorrow. Oh. Um, and, they were, and they weren't riding it for fun either. Yeah, there, there, were, there wasn't anybody other than us on there clearly just riding it for the last day's sake. It was people going places, and it's just criminal that that this is happening. To be honest, it's. Buses should be run as a public service. Um, first doing this, it's, it's only for their operational convenience. Because as we've just learned, it's, it's not an unused service, no. it is a well-used service. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, as ever, Bryn, do you want to do your promo? You Who can, are you? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, at showmeassignbryn. Um, and I would love it if you support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, anything like that. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, for one last time, farewell 144, at least in Birmingham anyway. Alas 144, I hardly knew you.